greater support for those earning a lower wage over the next decade. The government has accepted 18 recommendations made by a tripartite work group to uplift lower wage workers. Manpower Minister Tan Si Leng spoke to my colleague Glenda Chong. He started by giving an overview of the 10-year roadmap to speed up wage growth for such workers. What the exercise does um, over a 10-year period is to uplift um, the wages of our lower wage workers and also put them on a firm gradient to achieve uh, an uplifting over the next decade. Um, for the bottom 20%, um, in fact, what we have packed the gradient to be would be a median plus um, wage increase. And the plan is that uh, we intend to roll it out to expand it to more sectors um, whether it's sectoral and different types of uh, occupations itself. And eventually, we intend to also um, put in the local qualifying salary where we require uh, companies that hire foreign workers to work in their company itself before they even sort of uh, meet the quota needs. They must um, raise the level of all of their workers to fulfil the local qualifying salary requirement. So with that, over the next uh, 10 years, we hope to expand it. Um, of course, uh, government would also provide transition because given the fact that um, today um, the, the, the entire COVID situation has affected the economy somewhat. Um, so what we intend to do is to expand it across the different sectors over a period of time. And um, the plan is to ultimately uh, bring this uh, um, all the lower wage workers to cover from what is, hap what is today 1 in 10 to 8 in 10. Um, so 8 in 10 workers will have this uplift in their salaries. But Minister, saying that, you've also talked about how wages can outpace productivity for some sectors. So which are these sectors we're looking at? How can that actually be reconciled, number one? And what about those that are not covered under this progressive wage model? What happens to them? Yeah, so the, the, the first thing is ostensibly we try to uplift um, productivity in, in the firm. So we do have quite a fair number of grants available to help companies improve productivity and also to help workers to upskill, to reskill themselves, to improve their productivity. But there are certain sectors, there are certain jobs where productivity is not going to, 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 to be, I mean, you reach a certain uh, plateau. In these cases, we hope that the wages will outpace productivity. And again, government will step in to provide that transitional support. Um, over the long haul itself, um, in terms of helping the companies redesign, in terms of the scope, helping them to, to transform, um, digitalize, these are means uh, uh, and measures that we will put in place to help companies to improve the overall company level productivity so that the low wage workers can benefit as well. Um, for the balance in terms of, um, I think there's a group of uh, um, a small group of companies itself uh, where they are either uh, hawker stalls uh, in hawker centres itself, uh, either that or, or very small to medium, uh, very small enterprises like your heartland, uh, heartland shops, the HDB shops and so on, where they don't hire any foreign worker. What we hope to do is that through market forces um, by uh, sort of uh, um, also helping them to achieve the progressive wage mark they can also, we can also nudge them to pay and uplift these low-wage workers as well. But, I mean, we can't possibly cover everyone, but the plan is to try to minimise this group and then we will have other means to come and help them. And obviously, um, the low-wage workers will not only be supported by the progressive wage model, uh, the, the local qualifying salary, they will also be eligible for workfare as well. And workfare is, is um, um, direct government support to these low-wage workers. Minister, I want to pick up on um, workfare, as you mentioned there, because you're going to help younger, lower-wage workers, the qualifying age for this workfare income supplement scheme. It's going to be lowered from 35 to 30 years old now. Yes. Why are you yes. then targeting that age group? Are there specific issues of concern here for them? Well, we wanted um, the low-wage workers, particularly um, at 30, when they are starting out families, um, to have a much long, longer runway um, for them to eventually work towards adequacy in terms of their retirement savings, to service the, uh, the housing, you know, sort of HDB loan um, so that they can have a roof over their heads. And we also 
acknowledge and recognize the fact that quite a number of them are actually in the sandwich class where they have to take care of uh, elderly parents and so, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. So as a result of that, we think that by extending the age span um, from 35 and starting them from 30 onwards, the runway is longer, uh, more people will benefit. Now, why did we extend all the way to, to below 30? Now, these are graduates who have just um, graduated um, or perhaps even um, start, just started work. And I think they um, have the ability to go for skills future. They can upgrade themselves. I think that um, you know, they are actually in a, in, a, in a good situation as well. Minister, I want to um, talk about what you mentioned earlier about companies that are hiring foreign staff. They must ensure that the local staff get a minimum qualifying salary of $1,400. How did the tripartite group come up yeah. with this number? Well, the LQS, the local qualifying salary, has been around for some years. And every year, there's been revisions upward to the LQS. I think, in fact, um, only in 2020, uh, we didn't, uh, uh, either 2020 or this year itself, in 2021, we didn't um, um, put the, the increment in terms of the LQS, uh, LQS itself, ostensibly because of the pandemic itself. So, over time, um, we take feedback from the tripartite partners from industry and NWC, the National Wages Council, review it periodically and, and set it um, uh, at the level that's appropriate with um, you know, the national sort of uh, um, standards. So in this particular setting itself, we set the LQS at 1004, but this will also be reviewed yearly to keep in tandem with the, 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 the whole um, market forces um, as well as the industry needs. All right, thank you very much, Minister, for joining me this evening. I've been speaking with Manpower Minister Tan Si Leng.